Well, hello, my friends. Pastor Michael here with Heart to Heart Refinement Ministries.org. And I've been promising a video on what I do as a heart refinement specialist. And I'm going to get started right after these messages. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Well, my friends, as you know, as a heart refinement specialist, I like to do uh, book readings uh, and I like to put uh, slides on the, the screen so you can follow along. I'm going to do that in this uh, video presentation because I want you to get an idea of what a heart refinement specialist is. So uh, I'm going to back up and I'm going to talk to you about that a little bit. I'm going to put a slide on the, the screen here next to me. And as you can see, it has a heart on there. It looks like a really nice heart. But at the top of this slide, my friends, it says, what is a, a heart refinement specialist? The best way to explain what a heart refinement specialist is would be to break down the three words that make up the question. So we're going to break down heart refinement specialist. The first word is heart. In the context of this type of heart I am referring to is the emotional spiritual heart. So the question that you see there is what is a, an emotional, spiritual heart? So uh, let's break it down. And as you can see, another slide on the screen right here. Okay, A spiritual and emotional heart is a heart that is healthy. Spiritual healthiness acknowledges our search for deeper meaning. <clears throat> Sorry, let me start all over. Spiritual healthiness acknowledges our search for deep in, deeper meaning in life and is reflected when our actions become more consistent with our beliefs and values. Emotional healthiness is a measure of our happiness and satisfaction with ourselves and our lives. When, pe when many people think of health, they only consider their physical bodies. If you want a vibrant, healthy life, be sure to pay attention to your spiritual and emotional bodies too. As a heart refinement specialist, my job is to show you how. Okay. Overall, Americans are, are not in a good state of health. One of the contributing factors is that most people link health exclusively to the physical body. While the physical body is important, we, when we only associate health with our physical body, we fail to recognize our factors that contribute to our overall well-being. Most ancient cultures points to a connection between body, mind, and spirit and recognizes that each composed a part of the body. Okay? Now, integrated medication, medicine and healthy psychology are beginning to recognize that health is influenced not only by the physical body, but the spiritual, mental, and emotional bodies too. Your health is dependent on all four factors as opposed to just one of the four. Building into this concept, your overall health is also influenced by a trickle-down effect. The physical body is affected by our emotions. Our thoughts direct how we feel and our energy levels swing our mind and our thoughts. Let's get more specific in the details of each body and the practices you can follow to maintain their health. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a slide on the screen here, and it's going to talk about uh, our our emotional body. Okay, uh, being a health refinement specialist has an awful lot to do with uh, our emotional body. Okay, so what, let's cover that uh, to start with. Okay, the emotional body, your emotional body is compromised of your past, present, and future emotional experiences. It is the aspect of us that houses emotions such as anger, sadness, fear, hurt, guilt, resentment, jealousy, and shame. Whenever we have an experience, it generates feelings that are associated with past similar experiences. And we develop a label to identify the emotion. Emotions are memories. Emotions and memories are categorized and stored and they influence how we respond to experiences at that moment. As energy flows down from the mental body into the emotional body, it can dump into stored baggage from past and uh, create some turbulence. Stored baggage can come from past fears, which can 
project into the future and cause anxiety. Or it can come from experiencing a loss of anger or resentment towards someone, which can cause anger and resentment later in life when the same thing happens with a different person. You may even develop a belief that all people are this way. When there is excessive baggage, thoughts from the mental body will gener generate emotional stress that trickle down and affect the physical body. A person with overwhelming stress will, at some point, experience physical symptoms because of the mind-body connection. According to an article published by Harvard University, research shows that the negative emotions can harm the body and happiness is linked to our overall physical well-being. Therefore, it is imperative to develop emotional intelligence and do adaptive practices to have a more positive outlook on life, both mental and emotional. When our thoughts are more optical, optimistic, our emotional state states will be more positive, and when our emotional states are balanced, our physical bodies will be healthier. Okay, so now let's look at the spiritual uh, healthy body. Before I put a slide up on the screen, I'm going to come and talk to you for a little bit. One of the things that I that I do, and it's a must, is is I work a lot with uh, books that I wrote. Or, or written, and I put those pages of those on the screen next to me. The reason why, people, is I do suffer from a brain injury, and I suffer from a short-term memory, okay? I can come and I can talk to you from my heart, but if I'm trying to read something and then talk to you about it two minutes later, I'll forget what it was that I read. That's why I do the, the slides on the screen. That's why I write a lot of books. I want everybody out there to understand if you have a mental deficiency, it should not get in the way of your emotional and your spiritual health. So let me put a slide on the screen that talks about our spiritual well-being. Okay, now you can see, uh, now for the spiritual healthy body. The spiritual body is your connection to energy. For some, this may be more closely tied to religion than spirituality. For others, it could have more to do with the atoms of the body or the quantum energy that science refers to. Whichever way you choose to view the source of your energy is perfect. Okay? Energy trickles down from the spiritual body from source of the universe and first enters the mental body. To fully access the spiritual aspect of your being, maintaining a daily practice that keeps this connection open, if a blockage occurs, energy and information are unable to flow freely from the spiritual body down through the mental, emotional, and physical bodies. Therefore, a daily spiritual or religious practice is so important to maintaining this open connection. To be in a state of harmony between each of the layers of our being, we need to develop our intuition and spirituality as much as we do our mind and emotions to create a solid physical foundation. Jesus set an example for us of how to boost our spiritual health. He engages in spiritual disciplines such as solitude, silence, simplicity, service, study, prayer, worship, and fasting. There is no standardized list of prescribed spiritual practices but here are 10 dis 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 disciplines or habits, not in any order, that many Christians throughout the centuries have found helpful in, in boosting their spiritual health. It's important, my friends, that I share this with you because this is part of what I do as a heart refinement specialist. Another thing that I do as a heart refinement specialist is I offer spiritual health consulting services. So let's look at um, 10 points that will help us to have a healthy spiritual body that affects our spiritual body, our emotional body, and our mental body. Okay, here we go. Number one, prayer, silence, and solitude. Spending time in God's presence with or without words empowers us as it is a privilege and a gift to be able to commune with God through prayer. And number two, listening to God, spiritual journaling. Listening, paying attention to God's whispers in your heart reminds us that God is active in our lives. Writing down prayers, thoughts, questions, longings, and hopes 
proves meaningful to many people in faith. Okay? One of the things that I do um, is I offer an online school called Heart to Heart Refinement School.teachable.com. Okay? That will allow you to write down prayers, thoughts, questions, longings, and hopes and provides meaning, meaningful and hope provides meanings of faith to other people. I'm, I'm trying to reread the number point too, but the point is, is that in my online school, you can purchase a book and follow along with my teachings. My teachings are often done with PowerPoints on, on screen, okay? That helps you to be able to follow along, but also when I stop and make points, you understand that, but yet the page is open on the screen so you know when I'm making points. It's important. A lot of people, my friends, they will do something like this and uh, they'll write a book, they'll give you a book, and then they'll uh, um, completely teach off subject or off topic of what that book is. I think that's confusing for people. Okay, Let's look at number three here. Private corporate worship. Praising God opens us to the Holy Spirit, reorders our priorities, and redirects our paths. Worship connects us to God on a holistic level. Okay, Notice that's spelled W-H-O-L-I-S-T-I-C. Whole. Not broken. Not set apart. But whole. Number four. Bible reading and study. Meditating on God's Word keeps us focused on God rather than on our problems and wants. Through the Bible, God speaks to us and guides us personally. Okay, again, at the Heart to Heart Refinement Ministries School, you're going to be able to do a, a Bible scripture study that goes along with the courses that I'm teaching in that program. Okay, let's look at number five. Obeying God's commands. Putting our faith into practice increases our joy. This is one of the paradoxes of faith. When we submit ourselves to God, we find ourselves, and in the, an odd way, we are freed. Okay? What are the commands of God? Okay, There are 1,050 commands of God. If we don't understand these commands, my friends, or we've never read them before, in the context that I'm going to be teaching them to you on a playlist here on my YouTube channel, how will we ever know? And by the way, if you would like to subscribe uh, by clicking on that button over there, you will get a notification any time I share a, a video on YouTube. And if you like it, give me a thumbs up. I'd appreciate that. Let's look at number six. Love God and our neighbors. Journey to God leads us to a, a, a life of love. God is love. And when we live and serve in Christ, we experience love ourselves. And in, in point number seven, stepping out in faith when urged to do something. Okay, God urged me to start this YouTube channel. God also urged me to start a discipleship training program through an online school. Okay, let's, let's read uh, what that says. Trusting in God's guidance strengthens our faith. When we dare to step out in faith, we learn that God is with us wherever we go and that God is more powerful than our fear. And number eight, fasting, not necessarily from fruit, food, but perhaps from TV or something else. Finding time or space to pay attention to God by giving up something else blesses us beyond measure. We need to guard our hearts as well as our time from distractions. My friends, what distracts you from spending time with God? Okay. Number nine, a very good point, serving others. Reorientating our attitude away from the self keeps us on the right track. Following Jesus and serving others heightens our own experience of grace. And number 10, fellowship with other believers. That's very important. Building and being part of a Christian community equips us for sharing and caring within Within and beyond that community, the values of God's kingdom are different than those of the world, so we need to support and encourage, we need the support and encouragement of other believers in order to truly live as Christians in our daily lives. Okay. 
it's important to remember that disciplines are not ends in themselves, but means to an end of knowing God more deeply. If we seek God, we will find Him because He wants to be found. We can't earn salvation. Okay? We are saved through faith by grace. We can find that in Romans 3, 24 through 25. But we can make the effort to stay connect spiritually healthy. But we can make the effort to stay spiritually healthy. When we are fully alive in Christ, we are also robust in spiritual health. But what happens when tragedy strikes and we are no longer in a healthy state or emotion of emotion or spiritual harmony? Let me ask that question again. What happens when tragedy strikes and we are no longer in a healthy state of emotional or spiritual harmony? What kind of tragedies can strike? Tragedies such as the divorce of your parents at an early age and then abandonment by one or both of your parents. I feel this uh, pretty significantly in my heart. That's why I do what I do because I know other people feel the same thing. The tragedy of death of a loved one can also leave our emotional and spiritual state of being in a mess. How many of you can relate? If you can relate to what I'm saying, would you uh, write a comment down below that says that you, you can relate to me? This kind of tragedy can leave our hearts in need of refinement. Okay, let's look at the next slide here. On this side, you see a broken heart, okay? A broken heart that sometimes turns to stone, okay? Now I can tell you what a heart refinement specialist is. Think of the word refinement as you would the word remodel. The heart is housed in the human body and our body makes a home for our heart. What happens inside of our house when it looks like this broken heart made of stone? Okay, It doesn't work anymore, does it? When it doesn't work, it hurts and it hurts other people. Okay. Before I go to my next slide, people, I want to show you this a house that's here. I want you to understand that people live in a house. But when we mix this house with other people, it becomes a home. And when we have a home with other people, our heart is affected. Okay, there are things that will break our heart, people. And sometimes we need to be refined. Okay, I want to show you this next uh, slide here. Uh, and you can see it's uh, right here next to me again. Now let's look at a bathroom shower tub in need of remodel. Okay, you may look at this and you may look at the fact that, hey, this, this looks like a pretty good tub in there, but that tub is pretty low. You can't really sit down in it. Um, the grab bars are really not in a place that would assist somebody all the way around or that was taking a shower, okay? I used to be a, a home remodel specialist. Now I'm a heart refinement specialist. Okay, this shower tub combo is in the home of a lady that is 78 years old. She can't hardly step over that tub, let alone get down in it to take a bath to get out of it. I understand because I'm getting old myself. Okay, let's let's uh, look at a uh, another slide, and I want to put something on the screen in front of me that you'll be able to see is that broken heart that we were talking about and that shower in need of repair. And while you're watching that, I want to talk about a couple of things. Heart refinement is a lot like remodeling the inside of a house, except you are refining the heart of people, otherwise known as their home. Okay? Let me read that again. Heart refinement is a lot like remodeling the inside of a house, except you are refining the heart of people, otherwise known as their home. Let me share a few stories with you while this picture is on the screen for you to focus on. I'm going to read a story, and it's going to probably affect a lot of you, okay? My father abandoned me when he divorced my mom when I was five years old. That was 40-some years ago for me, okay? Listen to my words, friends. My father left me behind, leaving behind others to take your place. Carrying you, carrying on your name, walking around with your face, knowing you got left behind, wondering what's on my father's mind. He didn't even think to try to leave my mother with tears going down her face, left me only to embrace, only for me to ask her why. 
My mother can give me answers my father left behind. For he can give his love to another, but can't give his love to me. My mother would give her life as she's given life to me. My father I hope to love, will he ever really love me? He can take and make a life and keep living on. But what is it like to live without a father? He doesn't even know because he doesn't even care. He left me alone. And listen to this, my friends. Sometimes it takes a broken heart to find the tenderness that you so desperately need. This is a vulnerable story for me. To be honest, the last thing I wanted to do today was write this because it's a high feeling day. But then I thought maybe that's the perfect time to write. Maybe by letting my pain be real, valid thing, someone else will find and feel the pain. As easy as it is to tell myself I am less worthy, less successful, less of an expert, less professional, for having days when I feel like a mess, I know that none of that is true. Part of what makes me me is the fact that I know what it means to feel raw, anxious, and heartbroken. So that's what today is about, heartbreak and tenderness. Not the traditional Hollywood kind of heartbreak with a dramatic breakup or a violent death. I'm talking the kindness of heartbreak that comes from wanting to support someone you love and realizing you have no idea how to actually do it. The heartbreak of confronting your own fears, of trying to expand your own body boundaries and finding you're not ready or you've fallen short. The heartbreak of disappointment of, or self-betrayal. Many times folks would use another word for the agony I'm talking about. But my heart hurts. Last night and felt like I was breaking, so I'm calling it heartbreak. Critics be damned. I know I'm not alone in feeling like I have to have it all figured out all of the time. I know I'm not alone in feeling pain over the realization of just how fragile and precious everything in this world is. We all have so many reasons to be heartbroken. Violence, injustice, loss, self-betrayal, trauma. And sometimes it's not the hard stuff that cracks me up open but the transcendent beauty, the endless hope that I have so much faith in. Sometimes love is what breaks me. Today, I want to simply say, it's okay to break your own heart. It happens. It hurts. It might even feel like you won't ever recover, but you are an important part of the world and your pain will become something breathtaking someday. It's okay to not know how to get through the day because it hurts too much. It's okay to ask for help or to watch cat videos for a few hours or to sit in the bathtub and cry or to pull the covers over your head until tomorrow. It's okay if you have to pack it all down and muscle through because you can't skip work or the kids need to be fed or your parent is sick and instead you wait until you have a moment to yourself to cry in the car or the closet. The word ang 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 agony the word agony has been circling my thoughts over and over today. But behind the agony I also have this struggling strange feeling of being cleansed as if by allowing the pain to take up space by weeping and gasping and being a wreck that doesn't know how he'll get through the next moment. I'm purging the stuff I've been hidden from in order to make room for some light. Sometimes finding my edge only happens after I've stopped, stepped over them and fallen 
which in itself can be a remarkable thing if I'm open to it, even if it hurts like hell. So tenderness is my inv invitation today, my friends. Tenderness for the stuff that hurts. Tenderness towards the mistakes and the failures. Tenderness in how I think about it all and how you think about it all. I want us all to invite tender smiles, tender touches, tender sips of water that slide down your throat and awaken each taste bud with its coolness. Tender steps on the earth so that every cell of every toe knows it's alive and valuable and important. Sometimes, my friends, life is hard. Sometimes love hurts more than anything. Sometimes we think we can hardly handle something and then find out after it's too late that we weren't quite ready for that. Sometimes we wake up to horrible news about police brutalities or bombings in Iraq or shootings in nightclubs and college campuses, rapes, or that loved one is sick or that we've run out of money. And it's okay to hurt. It's okay to feel heartbroken. It's okay to wail and sob and beat your fist on a pillow and turn off social media and unplug from the world. Heartbreak is a part of life, especially when you're living in courage, vulnerability, and openness. Living by aiming high and wanting more for yourself and the people you love. Just know that behind the heartbreak is a chance to rebuild, to reconnect, to ask for help, and to come out stronger, even if it, they take days, weeks, months, or years to do so. When you find yourself hurting so bad you can't remember how to breathe, I invite you to think about tenderness. How tenderness can you be with yourself? How tenderly can you speak to yourself? How tenderly can you tend to yourself? How can how can ask how can I ask for help from others who know how to be tender towards you when it's a person or it's online? My heartbreak has a message. This message might be to take better care of myself, to find a way to be okay. with where I am instead of trying to focus myself to be where I'm not or to be sur or to surrender when holding tight feelings so much less scary. My invitation is tenderness, putting the pieces back together means you can make your heart more expansive, more resilient, more powerful in a way that honors you and your journey. And it may, and in many cases, it takes a broken heart. What I'd like to do now is show you a mended heart and a refined shower that I remodeled for a customer that could no longer use the bathtub. As I share another story with you, but before I do that, my friends, Excuse me while I gain my composure. We all go through heartbeat breakups. And sometimes, my friends, we feel like that heartbreak, heartbreak is too much and we can't handle it. My heart breaks for so many people out there that I know hurt and they don't know which direction to turn. That's why I cry. Because I know the direction to turn, my friends. What I like to do is I like to put another uh, slide on the screen in front of me while I read a poem to you. Sometimes it takes a broken heart that God must repair and mend. Sometimes it takes one crushed by a loved one or a friend. Sometimes he needs a heart that is full of grief and pain. Sometimes it takes one mourning, one mournful. Let me start all over, my friends. Sometimes it takes a broken heart that God must repair and mend. Sometimes it takes one crushed by a loved one or a friend. Sometimes he needs a heart that
that is full of grief and pain, sometimes it takes one mournful filled with regret and shame. Sometimes he needs a heart suffering one blow after blow. Sometimes it takes one sorrow, sorrowful so his mercy he can show. Sometimes he needs a heart shattered and torn. Sometimes it takes one regret full of self-contempt and scorn. Sometimes God needs your heart broken and beaten down so he may come into your life and you turn your world around. Sometimes it takes a broken heart that finally seeks his face. Sometimes it takes a broken spirit to receive the fullness of his grace. And as my friends, I end this uh, video with you. This slide shows what I used to look like when I was remodeling houses. I used to also have a uniform shirt, and that uniform shirt said, Mr. Michael, handy helper. You see a saw and a hammer there, but you also see a cross on that shirt. Every time I went into a house, my friends, I prayed for those people in there. And for so many years I did this ministry, and so many years I would hear the pain and the brokenness of people in the homes that I was remodeling. I would hear couples fight. I would hear children fight. I would hear children yelling at their parents and the parents yelling at the children. But my friends, I also heard this in churches where people would go and they would seek the help that they so desperately needed. I've been to Celebrate Recover. I've been to Divorce Care. I've been to Bible studies. I've been to men's groups, men's retreats, couples retreats. And I always felt and heard the pain of people and their brokenness coming from the church. But when I stepped into the home, people, when I stepped into the house of the hearts of the people, it connected to my heart and realized that I needed to find a way to help people to see the light, to see the light of who Jesus is and what he can do for your life. And my friends, sometimes we get into a place in our life where we don't know how to follow Jesus. We get caught up into the religious rules of this world and we forget to focus on the one thing that can bring us peace in this world. And that's a relationship with Jesus Christ. But in order to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, in order to have access to God, you got to follow him through his way, his truth, and his life. And my friends, that takes 23 steps, if not more. So I thank you for watching this uh, video. This is a very heartfelt video for me because this is what I do. This is why I became a heart refinement specialist. Your spiritual health matters to me. If you need me, my friends, make a comment below. I love you guys. Thanks for watching my video. May God bless you. May his face shine upon you. And may Jesus always bring you joy.